I'm going to throw in the towel. That's right. I was so close to saying, just let whatever happened, happen. I'm just going to just be like the gamblers and cash in all of my chips. I was so close to taking matters into my own hands. I was almost to say, I have taken all I'm ever going to take. Maybe you've never been there, but the psalmist said, I was about to say, uh, every man for himself and God for us all. You know what I was about to do? I was about to say, you got what you deserve. And I'm about to second the motion. Some things can happen in bunches. Just one episode is enough to stop you in your tracks. Well, as the fancy preachers say, am I talking to real people? Am I talking to any real people in here? Just, just one day can be enough to um, cause you to say, you about to see a side of me that I've forgotten about myself. You don't know me. They don't know me. They know about me. Because if they knew me, they wouldn't like me. And they're about to meet the real me. The sinful me. The backslidden me. The Christless me. The hopeless me. The faithless me. The unfocused me. They're about to see the on my way to hell me. And guess what? Right now, let it happen. You you got to know when you're approaching your boiling point. Y'all right, right. not going to let me preach this today. I know y'all not going to preach this. Sometimes, sometimes it's not just one episode, but when it rains, it pours. Yeah, and Jerry Springer said, I'm through. He's dead now. And he used to be the mayor of Cincinnati, Amen. Ohio. Yeah. He was very, this is before he was a television right. star. Mm -hmm. it's before he was a news anchor. Mm -hmm. He became a city councilman and a, the mayor of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Well, almost a mayor, almost a mayor. And he made a very serious blunder. Mm -hmm. And he crossed the border into Kentucky mm -hmm. And he had a meeting that he never should have had. And then he paid for the meeting with a check that he never should have written. I won't tell you the whole story. And then he said, I'm through. I'm leaving Cincinnati. I'm leaving Ohio. My family doesn't like me anymore anyway, so they'll be better off without me. I'm going to go to another part. Somebody, somebody said, I've not seen this proven. He thought he had a list in Kansas City was on the list. Aren't you glad you didn't come to Kansas City? All y'all would have probably had to go to the TV show and then repent. But somebody told him, they say it was some Catholic nuns who said, Jerry is not all bad. And they told the other people on the city council, don't throw him away. He said, I'm sorry. He admitted he made a mistake. And he that is without sin, let him. This is what the Catholic nuns did. They sent pebbles to all the other council persons, reminding them it's him today, but it might be you tomorrow. Can y'all hear me? Amen. And when he was about to throw his whole life away, for something he admitted was wrong. Based on what those nuns sent to him, he said, maybe, maybe. it's not over for me. And after he did a full disclosure, he received the largest amount of votes in Cincinnati's <laughs> history to be the mayor of the city. Off the council, comes back as the mayor, and he said, it was me this time, but I'm gonna see to it 
that Cincinnati never has to go through what I went through. You, you don't know sometimes when things stack up on you, it could be a setup for a comeback. I see I'm about to preach to y'all today because David said it wasn't just what other people had done to me as much as it was what I did to myself. You, you're too hard on yourself if you forget that God knew your end from your beginning. Maybe I'm talking to somebody in radio land. You, you're too hard on yourself until you let what you did in your past keep on making you a prisoner of where you could be better in your future. Thank you, Jesus. You make that a big mistake if you let the sins that are on your record loom larger than the blood that was shed on the cross. You, 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 you're about to make a foolish mistake if you're going to make a turn into nowhere when God is about to take you somewhere. And David said, all of that was stacking up on me. I, 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 I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that I should not have panicked when Saul was on my track, but I did. I knew, I already knew, I already knew, I already knew that I should have been at home more when I had all of those children by all of those different mamas. I paid all my child support. I let them all live in the palace, but I really was so busy working in the battlefield that I didn't build a fortress at home. I know that was wrong now. I didn't know it did, but I know it was wrong. I knew that I shouldn't have been looking over that balcony at that man's wife when the lady was in the bathroom being a peeping tongue. I knew I shouldn't have did, but I did. I did a lot of things, but now... Now I've got my enemies surrounding me on the outside. Yeah. And I've got regrets on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. But something happened. Yeah. Yeah, something happened just when I would have almost collapsed. Almost dropped my sword. Almost said goodbye world. I'm gone. I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Not when I go to heaven and not when I'm trying to dodge hell, but in the land of the living. Now, what I like about this that you don't want to forget, and I'm about through now. He said, look, before I saw it, I believed I would see it. I better read that again. You be sure I'm reading this right. I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. I think we have a word for that, Brother St. John. It's called faith. That's the substance of things hoped for. It's a pretty good message, isn't it? Uh, this Faith is the evidence of things not seen. I believed I would see it before I actually did see it. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Sister Terry, I don't want to pick on you too much today, but um, I was going to call her name out today and tell y'all, Sister Terry, makes the most speedy recovery. She ought to be back by now. But I believe she'd be back before I knew. She was back. Wait a minute, I tell her you back. Tell her you back. <laughs> Some things you have to believe you're going to see before you see. Yes, sir. You, you got to believe that plane is going to be at the airport before you go to the airport. You don't know what the plane looks like, but you have to believe. You believe you're going to get a paycheck before they give you the paycheck. You, you, you have to believe that the medicine's going to make you better before you take the medicine. You, you got to believe it's going to be, you got to believe it's going to rain before you pick up your umbrella. And you've got to believe that God is going to show forth his goodness while you're down in Sorrow Valley. Thank you, Jesus. 
I got to be able to say he is a rock in the weary land. Uh, you got to believe he is a shelter in the time of storm. You got to believe that, what you say, Mother Ross, he can make a way out of no way. When you don't know which way to turn, you got to believe that he'll walk with you. When you don't know how you're going to even get enough strength to stand on your own two feet. Amen. But maybe I better finish it like David said. He said, here's, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. This, this is the part of the Bible that I think I like the most. When it not only tells you what to do, but it tells you just as vividly how to do it. Yes. And then let me just let me just talk to some of these anti-holiness people. Um, if you really understand sanctified living, uh -huh. what makes it so glorious yes. is they don't only tell you how that you ought to live right, but the Holy Ghost will show you how to live right. Oh, it, it, this would be this would be an unthinkable religion if all we had was do's and don'ts and don'ts and do's, but you've got a helper here. First of all, you got some witnesses. You're not the only one who's been through a struggle. Why don't you say, I'm not the only one. You're not the only one who's been sick. You're not the only one who's had sorrow. You're not the only one who's been tempted. You're not the only one who's been disappointed. Every one of us need to remember there's some testimony. And I agree with Mason Tipple on that. Every now and then you need a good testimony service. Because you're overcome by yeah. the word of your testimony. Say yes. Yeah. And not only that, then, then you can have a personal encounter with the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what you're going to get on this walk. The Holy Ghost himself yes. Yes. will schedule an appointment. Yes. Yes. It, may, it may be way over in the midnight hour. I'm through now. The Holy Ghost may show up when you are all by yourself. Holy Ghost can show up. Holy, listen, wait a minute. I used, to, I used to have a landscape business. Holy Ghost would have me when I was chopping weeds. Holy Ghost would have me talk to me sometime when I was repairing my lawn. Holy Ghost would be with me when I was the bellhop running the elevator. Holy Ghost. When I was working in the steel mill, you don't have to always be in a beautiful sanctuary, but he can talk to you while you're getting out of bed. He can talk to you while you're cleaning your car, while you're washing your dishes. You even while somebody's lying on you. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. Okay, I'm not gonna blame anybody for that. I had to serve a funeral yesterday, and the nicest thing one of the old timers could say. I see your hair is falling out. Well, I've been on the world over 65 years. Nobody ever told me that before. I'm going to be a little nice to my brother from now on. Nobody ever said of that. And the, you know the devil told me what to say back? <laughs> Want me to tell you what the devil said? Let me vote you. No, I better not vote you. Y'all might give me the wrong vote. Do you know that when the devil is speaking to you, the Holy Ghost can override him. The Holy Ghost can tell you wrong answer. Wait at somebody and tell him that was the wrong answer. No, no. You know why? Because he, he will remind you you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your soul and your body. Holy Ghost will remind you he brought you from a mighty long way. Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. He likes this message. The Holy Ghost will remind you. Thank you, Jesus. That um, if you take one step, he'll take two. Both the Holy Ghost remind you we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Say yes, Lord. And in the sanctified church, you, you begin to learn that the Holy Ghost Will not only give you the what, but he'll also, if, if you do it right, he'll also show you how. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
they, they, they teach you, they teach you in some classes, Sister Terry. Now, if you can't get up, don't get up too fast. But if you're able, uh, shift your weight. Then you lean forward. Take your time. Somebody say, take your time. I'm talking to you all those crippled people. And then you put your weight on something that is more solid than you. You put both feet together. And then you take both, and very slowly you lean first. Then you just push up slowly. Put one hand on one knee. Put the other on the other knee. And then you can say, wow, I'm on this. Jesus journey. I want Jesus. What you say you want me to do? Walk with me. Psalmist said, I got not only the what, but I got the how. 14 says, wait on the Lord. Are you learning that? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. While you're waiting, while your courage is building, he will strengthen thine heart. How to finish it? I'm going to tell you what I told you before. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's how, that's how you hold on to your faith. Wait on the Lord. That's how you keep from cracking under the pressure. Wait on the Lord. That's how you keep your prayer wheel turning and the fire burning. Wait on the Lord. That's how the joy bells keep on ringing. Wait on the Lord. Somebody all right, all right, all right, all right. Somebody is going to ask you, how did you make it? Woo! Somebody is going to ask you, how did you take it? Somebody is going to ask you, why did you make it? Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Here's how I made it. I just kept on waiting on the Lord. Will it show up? And after a while, and by and by, he showed up in his strength, showed up in his power, showed up in his wisdom, showed 